printers and quadrupeds, this is Internet Personality Vangelis, and I'm back in the Mecha Zone with a fresh Predanaut player who is pre-orderable from May 18th to June 16th in the year of our Cyber Lord 2018. Check the info in the description for the most up-to-date information about that pre-order window just in case anything changes. Or you're watching this from somewhere in the distant future of June 17th, 2018 onwards. The Anubis is a fresh mechanical mutation concocted by Comantis to create the ultimate Predanaut soldier from a Mechanaut's rift core at the moment of death. It's also David White's first Predanaut design to receive the articulation upgrades found in the Explorer and Brawler Mechanauts. By the way, to cover the bases for first-timers, David White's Mechazone pieces are designed, rendered, 3D printed, assembled, and finished by a one-man operation. This is Indie Toy, crossed with 3D printing, crossed with robot design. Wrapped up in a bow of acetone vapor treatment. What Explorer was to the Mechanaut, Anubis is to the Predanaut. He's got the slight aesthetic shift that came with moving away from ball socket limb connections to more intricate peg-based articulation, and he's very much a spiritual successor to Fang, the original Predanaut release, with wider hips and shoulders, increased height, sharper teeth, pointier points. Anubis brings a certain full circle feel to the line. Looking sinister in this debut Fang Palette Evil Horde-esque colorway, Anubis is much more bestial and canine than most of his Predanaut predecessors. He's also got a tail. If you have stuff to plug on and accessorize, Anubis is decked out with 5mm ports on his shoulder blades, shoulder pads, forearms, and thighs. Thanks in part to his articulation design, Anubis just looks more subtle and intelligent. I had the same reaction to Mechanaut Explorer, and while a lot of that is me playing with joints, the residual effect of all the new articulation design gives the current generation a deeper emotive profile. And that's not to gloss over how the Anubis head sculpt adds a certain air of raised intelligence to the beast, through the shape of the eyes and the less pronounced muzzle. If you remove the tail, you can run it through a quick sword whip style transformation that slots together super cleanly, forming a solid blade that, on my copy, holds together like a rock, if a rock was the shape of a sword. Holds together like a sword. It holds to it's solid. I said solid. Of course, you can whipify the weapon if you want to engage with the full Ivy from Soul Calibur motif, or just leave it on his butt like a tail. Sometimes a biped just wants to keep his tail. The included figure stand is an interesting twist on the concept as it uses a pair of female to female 5mm adapters, rather than just like a peg going into his foot. Conveniently, you can also use these adapters to convert a pair of Anubis' 5mm ports into 5mm pegs if that better suits the contents of your accessory bin. Only downside is he's kind of floating a little bit over top of his stand rather than being tightly bound to it like an actual platform. Anubis does have some ball socket joints, they're just all in the right places. He's got a couple in his neck, one at the top, so that he can look around, he can tilt his head, he can look all the way up, thanks to uh, a certain bonus feature that is facilitated by that, and then there's also a ball socket at the base of the neck, which just accentuates the movements you're doing uh, with the top part. It's extremely emotive, uh, as is the opening jaw. It's a little bit sharp, so you don't stick your finger in here unless you're like you know, into the pain. He's also got a ball socket joint in uh, the middle of his torso, which gives him a huge amount of crunch, a huge amount of lean back, a whole bunch of wibble, uh, some turn. It basically is a ball socket joint in here that is then pegged up into his upper torso. Uh, and there's a similar setup here on the waist, slightly less range, but you know, full on turning. Uh, and it's, it's great. Um, this guy can do a ton of this kind of stuff, and his tail is jammed right up into his spine the way a tail is supposed to be. Also, these things are ball socket connected, so you can wiggle them around, position them how you want, uh, you know, make them react to certain situations. The tail is a series of ball joints. Uh, basically, each of these red pieces is ball socketed down into each of these gray conjoining parts. So if you arrange the tail the way I've done it here, which is uh, sort of you know, left, right, left, right, you can get a bunch of tail type swishing going on, and I think it looks pretty cool. Like, it is uneven, but the tail is literally made of sword chunks, so the angles and the, the kind of violent nature of it, it all aesthetically works for me. You can line all this up if you want, but then the tail doesn't get to do nearly as much fun stuff as if you uh, get a little bit crazy with it. Uh, as for the arms, there's a simple peg-in, forward, backward swivel for this part of the shoulder, a separate uh, pegged-in hinge going outwards, a uh, pegged-in bicep swivel, a double-jointed elbow that bends both here and here, 
and then the wrist is a ball socket connection so it can you know turn left and right uh, the claws can open up as much as you like but then uh, due to the ball socket nature of the connection you also get a little bit of turn here a little bit of turn up and then a whole ton of turn down uh, this is again to facilitate a certain bonus feature but a little bonus of that is if Anubis is holding his sword, you can get him to point it forwards, which is like my single favorite sword pose thing in action figures. So the fact that he can do this, he can basically go like, I'm gonna kill you, is pretty darn cool. Getting into them hips, uh, they're basically like the shoulders. They go forwards and backwards on one connection, they go outwards on another connection with, uh, you know, full Van Damme ability. And then uh, their thigh swivel, this piece is connected to the bottom chunk that swivels, so it reveals some hip stuff, which is kind of cool. And then here you can see there is a joint here and a joint here, because this guy's kind of got that digitigrade, like, Takumi from Kamen Rider Fies in his spoiler form sort of thing going on, where I have him sort of straight-legged, but you can get very digitigrade if you so choose, and uh, that is thanks to a joint here, and a joint here, and then another joint down here above the ball socketed ankle, which itself can, you know, go forwards and backwards, but more importantly, tilt a whole bunch. So articulation-wise, this guy is, uh, is doing it for me. He's making me feel good, and uh, while I still feel like the more natural articulation lies in the explorer and the brawler, that's because they look more like people. This guy is a lot more feral and canine and savage, so uh, you know, he's got the dig digitigrade leg thing going on, which means uh, I find him a little more awkward, but I find everyone with digitigrade legs to be more awkward. Uh, I'm, I'm real happy with how much this guy can look like he's about to pounce, rip your face off, eat it, digest it, and then tell you all about the bonus feature. Ooh! Making use of the copious range found in several quadrants of the articulation setup, Anubis can shapeshift into a savage quadruped mode. This is a really cool cherry on top of the upgraded Predanaut, doing a Beast Wars simple transformation that is supported enormously by the overall aesthetic and proportions. He looks vicious, pouncy, and mean. And all those joints we just talked about earlier totally come into play for the quadruped form of Anubis, allowing for a load of canine posability that further justifies the alternate mode. Or I guess if you really don't want a bipedal robot canine thing, but are way into a quadrupedal robot canine thing, then you can just leave him in this mode and you're good to go. I don't know if any of you are actually out there. I don't know if that demographic exists. So let me know in the comments if you fit that bill. I promise I won't keep a list of your names. Okay, I promise I won't share that list of your names. I promise I'll... You know what? I'm not making any promises. Hey, look, it's time for overall thoughts. This could have been a simple articulation overhaul, but with every major beat, the Predanaut Anubis drops a little bonus feature that shows a delighted passion for making cool toys. His tail-to-whip accessory is very smartly designed and gets some support from the wrist articulation's extra range for point-the-sword poses. That extra range primarily exists for the massive addition of a simple transformation feature, which also enhances the range of articulation on the Anubis neck assembly by virtue of needing the creature to be able to look straight up. All this stuff weaves together with features enhancing and supporting other features into an end result that marks another solid milestone for David White's Mechazone efforts. As I said at the top of the video, this is still more of an indie toy than anything else, being designed and produced in-house by one artist, but as with David White's other wares, it's got a great playable hand feel that makes it my kind of indie toy. The price of 75 US dollars is paying in part for the fact that one guy is doing all of this, but if you pre-order during the pre-order window that you should check about in the information box description below, you'll also get a bonus Anubis protoform figure, which itself has 13 points of articulation. If you aren't into artist-driven indie toys, then hey, come to your own decision. But if you are, or if you've been following David White's work, or even have picked up a few Mechanauts and Predonauts in your time, this one is a solid addition to that collection. Especially if you still haven't experienced the Explorer or the Brawler. You've gotta mess with the current gen Mechazone articulation stuff. It's still legit incredible to me that this whole figure came out of a 3 3D printer in an artist's workspace. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and I've got fingers crossed that somewhere in the queue, Comantis is making his way towards his own Mechazone upgrade. I love me some bug robots and would love to see what a second generation version could do.